do you want this pillow here? Yeah, I okay. do. Okay. I want to be comfortable. Uh, is, you, is that right? No. Is it okay to be comfortable? You know I don't like you to be comfortable. I know you don't. You have a problem <laughs> when I'm comfortable. The minute I see you relaxed, I want to mess with you. Actually, I don't think I need to be relaxed for you to mess with me. Steps to a successful marriage. Whenever you're uncomfortable, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> yep. There's so many memes on TikTok about that. Like guys, like they cut away to the girl and she's like in the kitchen smiling at them. And then he's like crouching to sit on the couch. And then she like looks back and then all of a sudden his ass hits the cushion. And she's like, hey, the trash needs taken out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just me. No. I, I really always thought it was just me. I thought I was suffering from terminal uniqueness, but I guess not. No, no. Everyone likes to bother their husbands. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey, listeners. Ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. Okay, so today we are going to talk about something that people have asked us quite a bit about, and that is how did we handle our diet on the road? I thought that now would be the perfect time to talk about uh, diet because we are getting back on the road. And yeah. um, there are some places we really want to visit. Uh, and what are those? Uh, I would say Greenville, South Carolina, Charleston. Yep. We were so close and we never made it over there, over the river. It was hard to leave Savannah. It was. It was hard to leave Savannah. I yeah. felt like we had to thoroughly explore that place before I felt good about going somewhere else. Yeah, agreed. Uh, but everybody says great things about Charleston. I want to head up toward Asheville, Bryson City, Knoxville, Tennessee. No, but not, you keep saying, you say South Carolina, North Carolina, and then you say Tennessee in the same sentence. It's not close. Yeah, they're close. Okay. because You are you mistaken. All right. I'll because we map. are talking Western North Carolina into Eastern Tennessee. The only thing that separates it is the Smoky Mountain National Park. All right. Because Knoxville is on the, if I'm correct, Knoxville is on the Western end of Tennessee. It is not. You are incorrect. It is on the Eastern end of Tennessee. Oh, how happy Nashville are you? Nashville. How happy are you to see I'm wrong? And Memphis are on the Western side of Tennessee. Nashville and Memphis. Nashville's more central. Yeah, because uh, Knoxville's only an hour. Uh, no, Knoxville's Knoxville more three hours. Oh, all right. I'm going to stop right now. You know nothing about Tennessee. Zero. I spent a month there. Okay, I'm done. Trust me on this one. <laughs> so we are headed to North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Tennessee, and I know we have to hit Georgia at some point as well because there are a couple of uh, little areas that we want to visit in Georgia. Rural, yeah. So we are going to be on the road for quite some time, and it seemed apropos to do an episode about one of the things that people ask us about quite a bit, which is food on the road and how do we stay healthy? Oh my God. We are like the least qualified people to talk about. I this. disagree. I, I, only get, <laughs> I completely disagree. I feel like on the road, we did fairly well. We had some mishaps and I would consider those mishaps Mishaps, to be 10 straight days of barbecue <laughs> in, te in Texas. Okay. So if you're talking about food, people would say eating protein is fine, mm -hmm. but it was the cornbread, the, the banana, banana pudding. pudding. I know I the hit baked banana beans with the sugar in it. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, um, and mac uh, and cheese. Yep, that that too. I was fine until we hit Texas. I would legitimately say I was fine until we hit Texas. Then I don't know. I kind of remember a time when you were like crushing sopapillas all through New Mexico. Like oh yeah okay we, but we did a lot of hiking we went to a we place hiking, called the though. Sopapilla Factory I know but we were doing more outdoor activities and you activities. ate a whole basket by yourself <laughs> they were so good they were so good but we were still doing a lot of outdoor activities with Roxy we were doing a lot of we hiking. were walking yeah a lot yes. we were hiking so we didn't gain a tremendous amount of weight on the road until I would say recently speaking for myself I did okay here's my backstory. I've always been a thin person my entire life. It wasn't until my 30s that I put on a little bit of weight. And then honestly, I'm 54 now. So I've 
I've put on more pounds. I mean, it got to the point where um, I actually had to, like most people had to start going to the gym and I started going to the gym probably in my forties. And I'll never forget one time I was at the gym and I, I had gained some weight. I had three kids at that point, but I wasn't like overweight in any, in any way, shape or form. I was overweight for me. So my jeans weren't fitting like they should. And I'll never forget. I was at the gym one time and I said, oh, God, I just got to lose 10 pounds. Or I said something about my weight and the owner came over to me and said, um, can you not talk about your weight when you're here? And I said, why? He goes, because you sound like an asshole. He's like, <laughs> literally, he said, he, he used that word. He goes, you sound like an asshole. And I'm like, what? He's like, people here are legitimately struggling with their weight. He's like, you're a thin person. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I never talk about weight ever. Um, Don't be an asshole, babe. It's hard. I know. Take it from me. I know. I'm sorry. I wake up every morning and then it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I have my streaks as well. <laughs> but I do. I wake up every morning wanting to be a good person and here we are. Yeah. Uh, so all that to say, I'm now probably the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life. And I attribute to some of that to my age, but also I would say it has been going to some really savory places for food that has caused a problem for me. And on the road, for me personally, it was Texas where it started. And then we just got back from Savannah, Georgia. And if anyone has listened to those episodes, I was having fried chicken as a side with every meal I ordered. So <laughs> that became a problem as well. Just like in Texas, I wanted to hit every barbecue place. In Savannah, I wanted to hit every fried chicken place. So. Um, I do try to stay active on the road. I do feel like personally, I ate pretty well on the road, which is why I can share like what I did. And James was obviously only sitting a few inches from me. So he shared in some of it too, although he is a bit more of a snacker. But why don't we talk about like, I don't know, like your habits growing up My as a habits, kid and um, how they've, you know, followed you through adulthood because that's what it's really about as well. Oh, well, I started out um, as a chubby little kid because both my parents were overweight, especially my mom. My dad carried a little extra weight when I was young, but my mother was big. And she was the person I spent the most time with. I ate what she ate. I was a chubby kid. But then around seventh or, eight, seventh or eighth grade, I discovered wrestling and I really loved it. I had already been doing other sports, but um, that sport more than anything really taught me the value of cutting some weight <laughs> And being strong at a lower weight class. And so, but the downside to that was the things and the, and the uh, methods that we use to cut weight to make the scale every match uh, were not the healthiest. We're talking running in saran wrap, doing stairs and spitting and chewing gum and basically. Spitting? Wait, wait. Yeah, go back. spitting into a cup. Like we would chew gum and spit into a cup to basically rid our entire bodies. Our, our entire body of water weight so that we could step on the scale. And once that thing was fine, then we'd go eat like a hoagie. Did it work? Or something like Did that. Did you guys ever weigh yourself before you spit? Yeah, absolutely. You were always weighing yourself like leading up to a match to know if you were going to make weight or not. No. Did you ever weigh yourself before you spit and after you spit? Absolutely. Yeah. You, we, 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 if we were having a home match, we would be able to stand on the scale when we arrived to the gym before the other team even got there and know right away, like, oh, I'm one pound, two ounces too heavy. Wait, you spit a pound? Running in saran wrap and spitting. Yeah. Oh my God. I've never heard Among of that. other That's things. That's insane. Okay. Um, some, some guys would take diuretics and I'm talking like not in seventh or eighth grade, but this was high in school. high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I think a lot in a lot of ways that gave me a false sense of security when it came to cutting weight. And, oh, okay. um, even into my twenties, like I would, uh, go from a size 34 waistline to a size 38 within the period of a month and then back down and then back up and then back down. Oh. So like one or two you months. So yo -yo diet, I like was, I was always up and down, always up and down my entire life, like almost my entire life. The only difference being the last 10 or 12 years, obviously I'm a little older and, uh, it doesn't come off as easy. So, uh, and I think also just making the mistake of being sedentary for so many hours of every day, being stressed out, lots of cortisol in my system, mm -hmm. um, uh, still in the back of my head, it's like, oh, I can cut weight if I want to. I know how to do it. 
uh, I just don't do it. And I make excuses, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I um, know. You're so, tired at the end of the day, too. I yeah, mean, you're tired. I mean, fatigue makes you, makes you make poor decisions in your eating habits, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, you see that on production sets or any, I mean, a lot of high-stress jobs where people are working long hours. Uh, it's it's easier to go down to, you know, the cafeteria or the commissary or whatever and overindulge because you're exhausted. So yeah. you make bad decisions when you're not getting enough sleep and you're not getting enough fresh air and exercise and all those other things that healthy people are doing. Agreed. Uh, I can honestly say when I, cause I, I was crossfitting at one point. So in my late forties, I started crossfitting and I, I did three years and then I had an injury like most crossfitters and I had to have surgery and I couldn't crossfit anymore. But I can honestly say that the one thing I learned uh, while crossfitting was if you work that hard at the gym, you don't want to put crap into your body. Uh, so I would never have eaten anything like I wouldn't have eaten fried chicken back yeah. then. I just, I, I don't think I had fried chicken the entire time I was crossfitting. Uh, you just, you think like, I just killed myself at the gym for an hour and a half. I'm not going to put that food in my body, but now I'm having it as a side because I'm not at the gym as often and I'm definitely not crossfitting. So killing myself at the gym uh, for that short period of time that I was doing it, uh, really showed me how lazy I was in my eating habits when I wasn't at the gym. So it's interesting yeah. that you say that. Um, I, I would also say that, you know, going back to the false sense of security, it's like, I know if I skip sugar for a week, I'm on the path to cut like 12 pounds, like within 18 days or something like wow, that. Wow. That's kind of crazy. So, that you can drop that much just from cutting out sugar. I know. I would need to do a lot more than but that. But whenever we've done, even recently, like within the last yeah. year or two, doing challenges at the gym, for whatever reason, the guys were always able to get like yeah. faster starts than that was the women off the block. That was before we started on the road. That yeah. was like, yeah, we yeah, were yeah. back in Los Angeles. So, yeah. But I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I have to start wrapping my head around the, the false psychology of all that. I'm not 28 right. years old anymore, you know? So know. it's like, I can't just get ripped in 60 days. Like all those uh, ads you see on Facebook or whatever, get know. you know, get shredded in 90 days. Uh, those you know, days are over. Yeah. Jimmy's going to need 180 days <laughs> because I'm older now, you know? So is Denise. So, so is Denise. Yeah. Um, but I, it was so funny because when we started talking about this episode, my phone was obviously listening. Mm. And um, now I'm getting all these news articles about like crazy weight loss uh, um, stories or people doing like um, absurd things or just uh, healthy things. So I'm, I'm finding all this stuff. And so um, I, <laughs> I came across one that, um, you know, people have gone as extreme as wiring their jaw shut. And do you remember in- yeah. Why are they, they still do that? I mean, I heard about that like- Okay. Okay. Do you remember that show? Yeah. Do you remember that show on MTV? The first reality show that ever came out. Oh, the one where they needed a crane to get people out of their houses. No, I'm talking about the teenage one. And, and oh, MTV. I'm thinking TLC. Okay, go uh, on. MTV. It's not Road Rules. It's the one that was help, before. Help! I'm a teenage fat ass. No, that's not it. it anybody who's listening, will uh, you're yelling out the name right now, and I I don't know the name of it. Um, <laughs> okay. hold on. I have to. I actually have to look it up. So hold on. Um, they would wire people's mouths shut on MTV. Reality. That seems so contrary. Real world. The real world. Okay. So. The real world? Yep. The real world. They wired people's mouths shut. So I remember. Okay. Just stop talking for a minute. I remember an episode of the real world where a girl wired her mouth shut so she could lose weight. And I thought it was the most absurd thing ever. But then like. I started hearing about people doing that. You didn't even watch the real world, obviously, because you couldn't even remember the name of it. And so you know about people wiring their mouth shut. I think it's insane. People actually did it. It seems so absolutely painful. Um, but I did read an article about somebody who made a three pound fork so that it would be very challenging <laughs> for them to eat their food. Three pounds? It doesn't <laughs> seem like enough weight to... Three pound fork. Are you kidding? Every time I have to pick up a three pound fork, I would really be thinking about what I'm going to eat. Wouldn't you? I think an electrical collar would work better. I would just pick up fried chicken with my hands like I do already. So it would not <laughs> yeah, stop know, me right? from fried chicken. <laughs> I know. A three pound fork. I mean, I guess if that's, yeah, um, sure. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. A three pound fork. That's an interesting take. Yeah. 
But um, okay, let's talk about some things that we did or what we actually tried to do on the road, which um, I thought was like pretty helpful. Uh, one of the things is, do you remember we sold everything in LA? <laughs> so when we got in the minivan that we rented to travel across the country, we were like, we don't have a cooler. Yeah, we didn't have a cooler. <laughs> Oh, very, very poor planning. Yeah, we did not have a cooler. So I, I do, I mean, I, I know it's basic. It's so basic people, but after being on the road for about two weeks, uh -huh. we did end up getting a cooler and loading it with our favorite snacks. Uh, but prior to that, um, we did try to stick to just three meals a day and we didn't do drive through. So for us, it was always stopping to get out go to a restaurant and have like, at least if we could two healthy meals and then like maybe a bad meal. When I call a bad meal, I'm like a burger and fries. Yeah. So we did try to do that. And our plan was to not drive more than six hours. And you all know this, if you've been listening and also to stop wherever we were going, like for lunch and, and take a walk somewhere. Um, because we didn't do back-to-back -back driving on the road, we would literally stop somewhere after six hours and spend the night. We did get in the exercise because we would walk our dog and we would explore. So I would say the exercise portion of our plan worked out fairly well. It didn't work out to like the fantasy I wanted, which is we're going to stop on the side of the road and hike the beautiful mountains of Arizona. No, that shit didn't happen. Yeah. We thought we were going to do a lot more of that type of stuff. We really did. And I don't know why we didn't. I think we just ran out of time. Like, why didn't we? Um, I think, you know, we picked cities that were like six hours away or less. And really, it was such a manageable clip that we really didn't, other than looking at houses in particular areas, we really didn't like break off. Like, we, I think we just naturally assumed like, well, when we get to Sedona, there are plenty of trails. We'll just hike there. Oh, and we okay. did. That's true. That's you know? absolutely true. Yeah. So, um. But yeah, I was like thinking today when we're about to record, like, why didn't we stop more? But that makes sense because we did do a lot of walking when in fact we made it to our six hour destination. Yeah. Um, I felt like our exercise was pretty darn good. Like, I feel like we stayed on track of moving our bodies almost every day or every other day. I never felt like we were super sedentary for seven days on end. No, we had stayed in Zion and, you know, oh, camping God. there and hiking there and all yeah. that. Um, even in Seattle, we did a lot of walking up and down hills, you know? That's true. Yeah. Because we were staying in the downtown area. So you're definitely getting steps in. Yeah. So when I, when people ask me how we did it, I do mention to them that we were, we had movement almost every day. And I do think that helped with us not gaining like a tremendous amount of weight because we were on the road for two months straight on the road, like eating from restaurants. We stayed in Airbnbs, but hardly ever did I cook because I had this grand idea that if we stay in an Airbnb, I'll make healthy meals for us. But the truth was, we just wanted to enjoy our surroundings and I didn't want to be in a kitchen. And that was really what made it hard for me not to stop down and cook a meal because, you know, that could take a couple of hours. And like, if I'm only in a city for two days, I don't want to be in a kitchen even for two hours. I want to explore. We want to look at houses. Yeah. We want to see the neighborhoods. So, um, and reminder, I wasn't working during that time. So I had all like I had all day to spend with you in a city somewhere. And we just, as a couple, we've never had that before to have that many weeks and that, that much time, yeah. you know, where I didn't have, Oh, I got to go back. I got to finish this thing or whatever. I didn't have any of that going on. So it was the so whole nice. like staying home and like we made breakfast, we would buy eggs and a loaf of bread. And that was it. Like that, that was really the only thing we ever made in Airbnbs. Yeah. Breakfast is a pretty much end. a staple for James and I. I mean, um, we're just breakfast people. I always have been a breakfast person, even in college. Like I had my apartment. I was always making breakfast for myself. So breakfast is a thing for me. Um, actually lunch and dinner too. <laughs> <laughs> and dessert. I really like to eat, but um, back to on the road. So I would say for myself, when I went into a restaurant, I generally tried to pick a salad. I tried to pick like something with a chicken dish for dinner. There were those moments where we'd hit a good Italian restaurant and I'm going to get the risotto. Like, I don't care. But I tried to make mindful choices because I knew we were going to be eating from restaurants for the next two months until we got yeah. a cooler. And then like a couple of times during the course of our travels, I would say a handful, like maybe five or six. I don't know. Like 
how many times, but we did get lunch meat. I'm just not a big lunch meat person in a cooler. Something about that just doesn't sit well with me. I don't know what it is, but I'm just not a big lunch meat person. And then I've got to move it from the cooler to the refrigerator of the hotel. And then back. it's like eh, too many hands on the lunch meat. I like cold cuts. I love them. You know this. I buy my own now because, you know, oh, be, if we're stationed you, something, before, if we're I, before I would buy it for the family because I would make sandwiches for the kids in the morning. But no, um, if we're going to be somewhere for a certain length of time. Yeah, like, but you don't need it. I never see you like busting out a turkey sandwich for yourself. I used to eat turkey sandwiches all the time when I worked. Every single day I'd have a half a turkey sandwich on the road. I don't do Name that. Name the last time you made yourself a sandwich. It honestly was in the car when I had mustard packets, <laughs> a couple pieces of bread, and I threw some turkey in between it. Okay. Yeah, that was it. All right. But um, yeah, you are a cold cut person. So for you, it was it was pretty easy. Like I could just get you a pound of lunch meat at any grocery store, and then I would make you a few sandwiches here and there on the road. Yeah. Um, I found though having fruit on the road was very helpful for snacking. Um, I'm a big fruit person myself. I I like everything. I mean, we had almonds, cashews. Yeah, we would stop. You know, I'm a big roadside food fan. Meaning, like, if you have a fruit stand, I'm stopping. Yeah. You've always been that way ever since I took you back to rural Ohio the uh-huh. first time. Yeah. You were like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, it's just like the lady who sells corn. Like, relax. We got to cook all this tonight. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay. I know. So I'm still- I think that's a city tourism. Like it was like Disney World for you. It was. And whenever I see one, like they'll, you know, they'll be like fresh fruit or or anything. Like having fresh fruit on hand at all times, like all the time. It didn't matter day or night. We always had fresh fruit in the car. Um, having some nuts was really helpful for us. Um, and also, I mean, really it's something basic. It's like, just kind of count your calories while you're, while you're on the road. If you know, you're going to go through a drive through I mean, you know, that meal is going to be 1500 to a 2000 calories. Like if you're stopping at like a burger place, yeah, um, I wanted we just to- did that very rarely though. I, I wanted to mention that. Uh, we did do that. We only did it once, actually, at Arby's. Uh, we had plenty of other fattening foods to eat at all the delicious places we stopped across the country. But there was one time where we stopped at an Arby's, and it did make me think. Um, you know, we talk a lot about food deserts in the city, in urban areas where uh, urban areas cannot get access to healthy fruits and vegetables, better choice meats, all that stuff. And basically they're buying their meals from convenience stores. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's kind of no different in a lot of rural areas in the country. That's true. Like gas stations, Hardee's, Carl's Jr., uh, Arby's, McDonald's, Taco Bell, like those were our choices at some places. That's why there were nights when we would roll up into towns completely famished. Because we didn't eat on the road. Because we, we didn't eat on the road. Anything that was not a fast food restaurant. And then we would get into town at like 9 p.m. and all the sidewalks had rolled up in little wherever we were. Yeah. That, I mean, that was kind of a lesson for me. Everybody seems to think a lot about, you know, uh, how hard it is, how hard it can be in certain neighborhoods in the city to get access to healthy food. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of problems in rural America as well. Yeah. There are some places where we would stop to get, um, I don't know, like one time I stopped cause I was like, I just want, I had a taste for an ice cream. Right. And there was a dairy queen. I was like, I want to stop. It was on this. It was on basically like attached to a gas station. And I remember it's so funny. You bring that up. I got in the car and I said to him, where do these people live? Like there weren't any houses yeah. for miles. And we'd been driving for miles. So I could tell you with 100% certainty. Yeah. There was nothing to be found. Yeah, where do the workers live that work there? And where do they eat? Like, does everyone just cook at home? Because you can't live on this fast food. Um, It's so interesting you say There were no sprouts in the middle of the desert on, you know, heading from Utah to Arizona, you know? Or more specifically, heading across the 40, going across Texas. I mean, there were- You're right. You know? But Texas did have some roadside barbecue places. They did. I mean- Yeah. Oh, they had a lot. They did. (laughs) <laughs> and you hit you hit every single one. I did. That brings up an interesting point. So you say that you think it went off the rails for us around Texas. Um, and it probably you're right about that. But let's let's just chronicle the last couple months. Shall I know, we? It's been bad. No, Thank- no. I'm gonna do it. We had Texas back in September, and then we went to Oklahoma mm-hmm. and we ate fair food. Uh-huh. 
And then uh, we got to- Fair, like county fair. Yeah, county fair food. Uh-huh, not like fair average. Which was no, incredible. Oklahoma, was Oklahoma City has a great state fair, by the way. Oh, yeah. And we <laughs> so, hit every single food stand. We did. And then um, we went to from there to where? Little Rock? Yeah, Little Rock. We ate really well. I felt like we did- We, we did, did okay there. Yeah, we did good restaurant. We did okay there. A couple times. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we went to Memphis uh-huh. barbecue. Uh-huh. And then we went to Tuscaloosa- I don't know. Did we even eat there? No, we didn't eat there. We got there late and we left the next morning. We okay. didn't even have breakfast. We had breakfast in the hotel. All right. So anyway, and then we ended up back in Florida and we did a little party party for the first several days we were here, but then we quickly got on track, right? We did. Like, so we had a period of- We both of a, lost weight. We did. I lost 12 pounds when yeah. we got here yeah. to Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, then almost immediately we head to Mexico. Yes. Party party eating resort food. Mm -hmm. Then we have a couple weeks off. Then we're in LA for the holidays, Mm -hmm. party, party, eating holiday food. And then we get back. That's when we did the Naples, Fort Myers and all that. And that was in the middle of me not feeling well, but still doing my uh, fried fish and beer (laughs) diet. At the end of January, we head out to Savannah Yep. Fried chicken, for, not so much party, party, but fried chicken, fried chicken, fried chicken for you. Fried pound cake. Fried pound cake, yeah. It sounds like in your in your world. But wait, we're not even no, back. I know. We're on. not back. We just got back from Mexico like your eight world, days ago. In your world, we were eating poorly when we were we had, not on the road. We had We had four weeks where we weren't eating poorly in the past five months, if you think about it. I don't want to even this it. week. I don't want to think even this it. week. Like, okay, we're here. We're set like Ellie's visiting us and yeah. your brother's here and all that. But it's like, there's a rack of eclairs on the bar I at every fall. single moment, know. you know? And, uh, it was like, <laughs> uh, we went out for sushi last night. I swear to God, it was the healthiest meal I've had in like six days. Um, yeah. So it's we been- are way off track. Okay, so which brings me back to we are the last people anybody should be taking advice from. Okay, so let's not do this episode. <laughs> no, we should do this episode. <laughs> we should do this episode as a parable and as a promise that when we go back out on the road, we are going to do better. Okay. Well, um, all right. Well, what do you think is doing better? What does that look like to you? Because I have tons of research I pulled from all of my news clips on Google since the phone's listening. Oh yeah. Of ways Zuckerberg's to do, always know, listening. Uh, of ways to do better. Um great. All right. So oh, you're asking me before you tell me oh, the yeah, actual yeah, ways I to do better, know. what yeah, my yeah. theory is under. Think? Yeah, what's your theory? Okay. Well, uh, first off, don't eat like a fat ass. Second off, <laughs> Uh, I would definitely say like, I actually, I shouldn't say sushi was the, the best thing I've had in the last five or six days. I actually made a big salad the other night and remember me trying to pawn it off on everybody. Nobody would eat it. Nobody Not would eat the salad. Person. It was Not like a single person. kryptonite. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up eating a lot of the salad, which was great. Uh, it was like, uh, if he had said salad one more time, when was somebody was going to yell at him. Yeah, totally. It was like an eclair. Enough with the salad. Yeah. It was like an eclair in one hand and a bowl of spaghetti and meatballs in the other. Uh-huh. Oh my God, this place. Anyway, um, uh, I would say we definitely need to incorporate a lot more, not just fruits, but vegetables into our diet. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm a big proponent on, and I mentioned it like a little while ago on counting calories. I know it's so old school, but honestly, whenever I've wanted to lose weight, I've counted calories. Like I try to stick to, and I'm no dietitian. So, you know, I'm just telling you what works for me. I usually stick to around 1500 calories a day. Yeah. And when I do that, I can seriously lose weight. So I think to myself as we're heading back on the road, like I've already had this conversation with myself, like, don't be a freaking like, fat pig on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And we're using these terms, by the way, it's like, it's like we use a term, like I call, I call everybody a fat ass because my friends, all my friends and I growing up would just call each other fat ass, whether we were or not, uh-huh. you know, it'd be like, whatever fat ass move out of the way, you know? And so it was a, it was a derogatory slash 
like uh bro, bro term was it a loving it was a loving term, term. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. and so don't uh, call me a fat ass yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't worry we never did it to girls don't worry it was just like the Thank guys God. but and you're like see, you say eating like a fat pig it's like this is not to fat shame anyone uh-huh. right no. no it's just me it's fat because, shaming me but it's like it's you know you. like in your heart of hearts i'm talking to myself i'm ta- i'm looking at myself on the monitor right now and i'm talking to myself as i'm saying this to everybody who's listening to the show you know that that slice of pecan pie is what made you fat, not onions, not lettuce. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh-huh. when you say, oh, I've had, you know, it's like, I have to push myself away. Like, there have been times where I've been really successful at eating half of my sandwich at work and bringing the other half home and eating it later at night. Still consume the same amount of calories. What I didn't do is eat like pig face Johnson when I got <laughs> home after sucking down an entire hoagie at lunch at work, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it can be done. Everybody knows how to do this. Like all this bullshit that they they feed you oh, yeah. on Facebook or Instagram, like whatever's in your feed or whatever comes up on your recommended for you or whatever. Like you know how to do it. It's 2023. We all know how to cut weight. Uh-huh. It's just a matter of like, are we going to do it? Right. And how do you do it? Everybody now, like the big buzzword is get enough sleep. Right. Everybody says get enough sleep and then you're not going to wake up exhausted and make shitty decisions right out of the gate in the morning. But there are a lot of other people. Dr. Nandy was one of them who said, you know, kind of hinted at gut bacteria and all that. And um, I've read in places that the first thing you eat in the morning triggers what the rest of your day is going to be like and what your gut is going to be asking you for. I don't know if that's true. I'm not I a have nutrition the same expert. Thing every single morning. I am such a creature of habit. You are. I have eggs and two toast. eggs, a piece of toast, and sometimes some avocado. Yeah. What does that say about the rest of the day? I don't know. I think your body, you're you're a different beast. I don't know. Oh. Your body's just telling you like we had our normal breakfast. Now let's go crush some fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. I, I, huh? Because I some days I have good days and some days I have bad days. Yeah. I still think like as we're about to leave. I just honestly think to myself, like, I'm going to be better, meaning that now that we're out of Savannah, now that we left Texas, I know there's some good food headed headed our way, but I think I'm going to go back to the basics, which is I know we'll be mobile. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, that's not an issue. We're not, I, I never have a problem. I'm not going to have a problem sitting here saying we have to exercise more because we get that on the road. And for us, when we're not in the car, yeah. Right. We definitely, we're moving every day. Like we are. Every single day our body we is do. moving. We do, we get which after is, it. When I was in Savannah, I walked out almost every single yeah, day. Yeah, so, and, and everyone, you know, like every every personal trainer, every, every health expert will say, move your body. So we're getting the movement. For me, I'm going to go back to kind of what I started with on the road, which was my fruits, my fruits, nuts. It's hard to get vegetables on the road. You can't do it unless you're like chomping on a tomato, which who's going to do that? Maybe some cherry tomatoes. I know we did that early on, yeah. but I'm really going to stick to like counting my calories. I know that will work for me. And so I'm just telling you what will work for me because people have asked. Like, again, we have gained a few pounds, but we haven't gone off the rails crazy. And um, no. I, I to keep myself in check, I just have to count calories. I mean, I just have to. So I know if I'm going to kill a burger and fries for dinner that day, I've got to take it easy in the afternoon. Like I just have to, I'll still have my morning uh, eggs with a piece of toast, but I'm not going to go insane at lunchtime. I may just even have a smoothie at lunch, which is lower in calories. I'm not going to have a high smoothie calorie intake, but I'll be mindful about it. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty, except for the bad foods of like Savannah and Texas, I've generally always eaten healthy. I have always eaten healthy. That's true. You always gave the kids healthy food. Mm-hmm. They were all eating like steamed vegetables and fruits and cut up fruits and all that other stuff, like the among the first things they ever ate. I think I'm fortunate in that my mother cooked everything from scratch and I'm not an adult that had to completely change my eating habits because I have so many friends who as adults, like in their 30s, once they had kids, had to change yeah. the way they ate from what their parents taught them. Oh, that would be so taxing. I, I don't know if I could do that. I give anyone credit who does that and had to do it and was successful because that to me, having these poor eating habits from the time of, let's say, three years old to 35 or 40 and then changing it, oh, you're a super person, honestly. 
Yeah, it's difficult. I'm not going to lie. Like when I got to college and there was like a salad bar, I was a little confused. Like what are you going to have for dinner? You were like- Yeah, because uh, I grew up on Hamburger Helper, you know? Like everything my mom made was out of a box or a can. Okay. So I have to ask you, when we met- like, did my food influence you at all? Like, yeah, definitely. Like, it definitely steered me more toward the healthy stuff. Like, I'd never eaten asparagus until I met you. I'd never had Brussels sprouts. Do you remember one of our very first arguments over a pizza and why I freaked out? I don't remember. Oh my god! I can't oh, canned you- mushrooms. I lost my the shit canned mushrooms on canned incident. Mushrooms. Yeah. So, do you remember it? Yeah, I remember it. You were a psycho. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> okay. Would well, you want to? <laughs> okay. So do you want to tell everyone like what actually happened? Yeah. yeah. Um, we lived in Studio City, California. There was a place nearby. What the hell was the name of that Joe place? Joe Peeps. Joe Peeps. We never Everybody's ordered- like, Joe Peeps pizza and all that other stuff. And everybody in the area loved it. Everybody who worked with me was like, oh yeah, Joe Peeps. You should check it out. I brought home a Joe Peeps pizza one night. And instead of using fresh mushrooms, they were using canned mushrooms. And they still do to this day, by the way, because I tried it maybe three years ago when I was working over in that neighborhood again. <laughs> and um, uh, it did it did boggle the mind. It's like, why are you guys using canned? Okay, like everything else was okay, fresh. Let's just stick to the story. You're anyway. talking about right now. You're thinking that. But when you got that pizza, it never dawned on you. Oh, no. So you- Got the pizza. Yeah. And over the course of seven days, I ate that pizza by myself because someone refused to even take a bite. I was like, I remember freaking out. And I don't know, um, it wasn't that you brought it home. If I remember correctly, you ordered it on the phone. And I was saying to you, make sure the mushrooms are fresh. And you kept saying to me, I'm ordering this pizza. Like you wanted to, I was interrupting your call. Uh And then you hung up and I go, are the mushrooms fresh? You don't remember it as well as I do because it was one of our I first don't. fights. And you were like, uh, I don't know if the mushrooms are fresh. I'm like, if they're not fresh, don't order their pizza. Like it was, I, I literally walked in my bedroom thinking- <laughs> You don't even like mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. I was like, I remember walking and going, I don't know if I could date him anymore. He is fine with v- canned vegetables. I was like, I can't do this. I never had canned vegetables in my life. Not even like cream corn. Like, I mean, cream corn, I, I like got as an adult. Like I was like- Someone, I mean, there's no other way to get cream corn. I know. I, I got it as an adult. Like, I never had it as a child. Right. And so uh, I remember walking in the bedroom. I'll, it was like yesterday. And I was like, am I going to stay with this guy? Like, he likes canned vegetables. <laughs> you were having existential questions I while like, I was chowing down on my canned mushroom like, pizza. Yeah. And the, and the pizza came. And it was canned mushrooms. I go, um, nope, I'm not eating that. Yeah. But so- I know the difference now. But back then, no, I didn't know the difference. And it tasted great back then. But now if I saw it, I would probably have like Stockholm syndrome. I wouldn't I wouldn't eat it. I still would behave the same oh, way. I know and I would you, still I know question you, you why it. I'm with you. But I would, but I would look at it and I'd be like, should I eat this canned mushroom pizza or not? <laughs> I might. So, okay. So you had asparagus for the first time when you met me. That's yeah, kind of I had never eaten asparagus, huh. asparagus before. There were a lot of fruits. Like, okay, so I grew up poor. We did not, uh, we had blackberries, but they were out of the bush, you know? Oh, that's the best. <laughs> like, we never bought oh, I would have loved for blackberries off we the bush. We couldn't afford, re- like, like off season winter blackberries. We never had that shit. No uh-huh. way. We were, n- I didn't have cantaloupe until I was probably 12 years old. And now it's so weird. It's like one of the cheapest fruits you can buy. Yeah, I never eat cantaloupe. Like, I like I cantaloupe. Hate cantaloupe. I like it. It's really good. I used to like when I was a kid, but I don't like it now. Okay. I just don't like it. But honeydew. Oh, I love honeydew. Oh, you love I honeydew, love but you're honeydew. gonna discriminate against cantaloupe. I hate cantaloupe. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, I love honeydew. Though. Um a lot of fruits like that. Uh, like that there was just no way like like plums. I, I, I never, you know, my parents never bought plums. <laughs> <laughs> Black plum, apricot. And, and plus now they have all these like hybrid they're like a trillion versions of apples now. It is true. They just had Washington apples back in the yeah. day. Uh-huh. You had you had Macintosh, Washington, you had delicious. Red, delicious Red, yeah. and you had Green. And that was it. Yeah. Those were only choices. Yeah. Do you remember like one of the first meals we had together where you were like, huh, I've never had this. Like in addition to asparagus, was there a meal that we had together where you're like, oh my gosh, I've never had this homemade? Uh, I'd never, well, you made red beans and rice for me because I was a huge like Creole Cajun fan. That was the first meal you ever made for me. I remember that. Uh-huh. And you made fried catfish. 
I don't know. Well, the fried Looking catfish on- was just, that was like a one-off because I don't fry catfish. And I had to ask my roommate who's from Louisiana, but that was like the first time you came over for dinner. So I've never done fried catfish ever. I mean, that was like, I had to learn how to do that. So I'm not a fried food person. Okay. Well, I know. We but don't you have to that- defend making me fucking <laughs> you catfish. You brought that up and I'm like, I eat healthy. And then you throw up fried catfish. I'm like, okay, well, I had to learn how to make that for that date that we had that night at my apartment. Okay. I, it's so funny. I'm asking you, have you ever like, I'm asking you about a healthy meal. You, you just don't listen. Black bean soup. Forget it. Just forget it. You just don't listen. So I don't know. Right, what, are you, what are some of your early ones? Forget it. Like it was just like, like you cooked more with macros. Like everything you made wasn't doused in sugar or heavy, heavy carbs. I, I think I, I, I mean, that's the way I was raised. So I think I cook like that, but you throw out freaking fried fish. I'm like, okay, you threw me for a loop, but all right. Well, you did um, make me fried fish. That was the first date at my that apartment. Love, that is that, not the way I that's cook. That's the meal I'm, that made me love you. So it's important for us to mention that meal. Because <laughs> if you wouldn't have made that, I was really on the fence about you. Okay. I have a question. So there was an article I read when I was dating that guys will be more attracted to you if you have a full refrigerator. Did that ever happen to you? Like, did you ever date a girl and you open up a refrigerator and there was just like Diet Coke and you were like, I'm I, out? I don't recall that ever happening. No. Yeah. So it wasn't a food thing for you with girls? No. It wasn't. It wasn't. I, I'm not going to talk about <laughs> what I was looking for in my, in my life at that point. Okay. All right. But that I'm was- afraid the kids are going to be listening to this episode. So I did read that though. I when d- I was in my 20s, it, like in some like Cosmo article, like, oh, if you have a full refrigerator, it's more attractive when he opens it up and sees like, you know, fresh- That's bullshit. You know, yeah. I clearly, because yeah. you remember fried food. So, okay. Fried fish. I got oh my your God. point. I think we're done totally two different pages. So there are actually some, some scientifically uh, proven uh, things that researchers and doctors say actually work. And would you believe one of them is something I used to like ixnay all the time with you. What's that? Weighing yourself every day. Oh, yeah. I think that is such a complete waste of time. I've never had a scale in my house. I think it's just a reminder of your failures. But I read an entire article about how weighing yourself every day is a reminder of where you want to be. I think it's total bullshit. I've never <laughs> owned a scale. You've been a scale person since the day I met him. I mean, literally, he yeah. moved from his apartment into me with like two things, like his clothes and a scale. And I've never in my life owned a scale. So does that work for you? Yeah, I think some some people need the like the daily metrics. I find when I'm not doing it, I'm gaining weight. It's really that simple. Oh my God. I've read this and I thought, this is so James and this is such crap. Yeah, Even so though let it's me break signed- it up. Yeah, go ahead. Go okay. right ahead. Just school us all on how we're wrong or how I'm wrong. School me how I'm wrong. Researchers from the University of Pittsburgh School of Nursing and the University of California, both two prestigious places, uh, San Francisco School of Medicine tracked 1,042 middle-aged adults over the course of a year. They presented the results to the American Heart Association last fall. In a nutshell, just the act of weighing yourself every day helps weight loss. Where's our scale right now? Uh, it's, in the, it's in the garage. Yeah, because I just don't believe in scales. I don't even think I know, you but have that's one. where I work out, so makes sense. Uh, participants- oh, I thought it was because I really wouldn't like, I hate them. Well, I have a scale. Like you wouldn't even buy a scale. So I bought a scale and yeah, it's <laughs> exactly where I spend most of my time. Okay. Um, participants who never weighed themselves or weighed themselves only once a week ended up losing no weight over the 12 months. Should we bring the scale on a trip with us? Those, maybe we should. Ooh. Okay. Maybe I should start weighing myself. All right. Okay. Maybe I'll turn over a new leaf and not poo poo the scale thing. It, yeah, I mean, I mean, what? I'm 54. We can treat. We can teach this old dog new tricks. Well, I'll get to my theory in a second. Let me finish reading these stats. Uh, those who weigh themselves every day lost nearly two percent of their body weight. No, it's not magic, says researchers. Monitoring your weight daily keeps you aware of what you're eating and how much you're exercising, and how that is affecting your waistline in real time. Um, so there are apps out now. Noom is one of them. Uh, Wonder is another one, W-O-N-D-R. And I think there are a couple others where, uh, okay, so they get you to count calories or at least log your food and get in the habit of logging your food. So there is something to say about daily tracking of your food to make sure that you're not 
you know, like blowing up your diet uh, or just forgiving yourself for something that you think was only 400 calories, but in reality was 1600 calories, you know? Oh, that happens um, a lot. Yeah. So food tracking is a big part of it. There's a psychological component to both of those apps where they sort of instruct you, not sort of, they instruct you to not beat the shit out of yourself when you've had a bad day at the fridge. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, when you wake up the next morning, it's like, hey, you're back. New day. Hey, so good to see you. And sure, it's a chat bot or an AI coach uh -huh, or something is sure. programmed into the app. Totally get that. But it doesn't matter. Like once you buy in, it actually works. Like I did it when we were back in LA for a period of three or four months back when the pandemic, like when we were still on lockdown and it really worked. And then of course, lockdown lifted and I went hog wild. But anyway, moving forward, one of the other big components of, of these apps is they encourage you to get over that fear of the scale because let's face it, there are a lot of people who haven't stepped on a scale in years, right? Yeah, that's true. And uh, that first shock, like why save that shock for when you go to the doctor? when you're not feeling well. And all of a sudden oh, the nurse takes you around the corner. That's a good point. She's already you, feeling bad. Yeah. And you say to yourself, okay. And you end up leaving there saying, wow, I'm leaving. Like, uh, that's 35 pounds worse than I thought I was when I walked in there, you know? Yeah. So you're like, I have a sinus you infection You lie to and yourself. You buy skinny mirrors. You do all kinds of crazy shit. You wear black. You think you look thinner than you do. Mm -hmm. You suck it in mm -hmm. when you're brushing your hair, your uh -huh. teeth, and that's not how your belly sits all day, every day, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I do feel like there's something to be said. Like if you get over that initial shock of standing on the scale and being like, oh shit, I've got a lot of work to do. And then you get sulky for a day or two as you're eating your lettuce, <laughs> <laughs> eating your lettuce. Well, you know, every, like any, any, um, personal trainer or, you know, coach at a gym, Experts, they all say the same thing that it's 90% what you put in your mouth and 10% exercise. And I certainly believe that too. I remember when I owned my business in Los Angeles, one of my clients came in and she was substantially thinner than she had been the year before. And I remember asking her, because I was very comfortable with her, and I said to her, How much did you lose? And she was a small lady, like five, four, maybe. So, you know, this number is staggering for that frame. She said she lost 40 pounds. And I said, how did you do? And she said, I just watched what I ate. And I said, so did you like join Orange Theory or a gym? Like she goes, no. She's like, I didn't even walk. She's like, I literally just watched wow. what I ate. And I've heard this over and over again. I mean, look, we both have had coaches in our lives yeah. um, for, for like working out and they've all said the same thing. 90% food, 10% exercise. So um, we, we're good on the exercise. It's the oh, food part we're bad Yeah, on. I mean, I love working out. Like I really do like it. But yeah, I like there are moments where I'm about to eat something and I hear either Jonathan or Will's voice in my head from Those arena, are the coaches my from coaches from Arena Fitness in Los Angeles. And, yeah. and I hear them saying, you cannot out train a bad diet. It's true. I heard that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. So today I want to give a shout out to one of our listeners. She has the best Instagram handle. It is OMG, Jessica is shameless. And her name is Jessica. And she has sent me such great little messages about the show, but her very first message was about where she lives and how we should come visit. So I'm going to read it right now. She said, you guys should add North Shore Lake Superior to your list in Minnesota. It's a very pretty part of Minnesota. Lots of hiking, natural beauty, and some great wild Ooh. rice. <laughs> <laughs> wild rice. I thought she was going to say- Jess some with the wild rice plug. I love it. I know. I really thought she was going to say, like when I was reading, I was like, some great, you know, and I'm waiting like blueberry picking or strawberry fields. Wild oh rice. God. It's yeah. the perfect one to read for the diet episode. Uh -huh. Go on. I wonder if we could pick it since it's wild. I don't. Is it called picking it? I have no idea how rice is like. Yeah, you pick rice. I don't know. I haven't seen it up close. But I'm wondering if it's wild enough for us to harvest. We're going to harvest the rice in the Upper <laughs> Peninsula. Where is it again? No, it's the uh, North Shore of Lake Superior in Minnesota. Okay. Jess, bring in the thunder. We love it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. And uh, thanks for your message, Jess. All right. Back to the show. 
Um, you know what other thing I found, like, you know, in, in researching this whole topic, because there's so many different ways to do what you're doing. And then there's like crazy stuff, but uh, the scientifically proven, like, um, was another one, which I thought was so interesting because I'm going to buy this now is eating on a blue plate. There is something about the color blue that alters the way your food looks. Really? Yes. And Are you kidding me? I'm not. And so I pulled the article. I've never heard that. Yes. I pulled the article. I'm going to read it to you. Go ahead. It says, um, it's from a, a magazine called Contact. And it says that um, 33 33% of people eat less when they're eating on a blue plate. And it has to do with how it alters the look of your meal, which is why you should be buying blue plates. Blue lights make food look less appealing, while warmer colors <laughs> nice. like yellow have an opposite effect. And this came from Val Jones, who's a doctor. Funny enough, we had white color plates, and then we also had like really cool terracotta plates Yeah, back in Los Angeles. Um, blue plates. I think I'm going to buy blue plates and see... If we eat any less, you should buy, yeah, you should buy blue platters and everything. Um, Ooh, I mean, there's something to be said for that because, you know, if you watch a movie and it's colored a certain way, it makes you feel a certain way as you're watching of it. Of course. They, or you walk into a room and the room is yeah. colored a certain way. So this would make sense. You know? I love the color blue. So maybe this will have an adverse effect on me. You look good in blue. Thanks. I got a lot of blue on today. Yeah, I had no, to double you, check to make sure this wasn't a Tennessee tuxedo. No, it's not. I might be running the running running the line a no, little bit. No, it's not a Tennessee tuxedo. You're all good. I like this but, hoodie, um, though. There okay. are some things, though, that other than watching like what you eat and the amount of exercise, did you know that there are certain vitamins that you can also take that promote weight loss or help you with weight loss? Like not diet pills. I'm talking about actual vitamins. And this again comes up when I'm like on Google and you know, these articles will come up. Did you know that? Did anyone ever tell you any coaches? I mean, no coaches, but I did come across this. Ready? Uh, vitamin D doesn't just help your body absorb calcium and regulate your immune system. It could also help you lose weight. In 2009, a study out of the Endocrine Society, is that really a group? It's on the internet. Researchers found that adding vitamin D to a reduced calorie diet might help you shed more pounds. Ooh. In addition, another- We have vitamin D in the closet. Yeah, it's just sitting there in a bottle. Oh, not anymore. Oh. I'm, I'm adding it. I'm adding it to my food. I'm going to take it every morning. In addition, another study published in the British Journal of Nutrition found that vitamin D did a lot of good for burning body fat. Hello, double weight loss, whammy. Okay, here's what's crazy. I've also heard a lot about mag magnesium, but magnesium is one of those things that like it's a trend. It comes and goes. I mean, I do think that magnesium is probably as amazing as everyone says for your health, but it had like, it was this huge surge in like, I don't know, like 2001 or two where everyone's like magnesium, magnesium, it's good for everything. It's good for- <laughs> Is you that know. right? I don't remember. I oh mean, you God. would know because- Where you know, were you? Where, I know. But well, you, you, were, you were a mom and you were, you know- I wasn't was like, a mom yet, was I? Oh yeah, I was a mom in yeah, 2001. Yeah, okay. I had knocked you up by then. Yes. <laughs> okay. I was a mom. Twice. <laughs> Not yet. I was only once a mom. Okay. okay. And so uh, magnesium was all the rage. You were out working and I was reading about magnesium. <laughs> and I remember. <laughs> oh my God. This is what was going on all day at uh -huh. my house yeah. when I was And out. I remember this getting a awesome. bottle of magnesium and I used to even put it in Parker's like food. Like I was like, it was, there was, I had liquid magnesium. I had regular magnesium. So I was all about the magnesium craze. I was like, I'm in it. I'm in it. <laughs> magnesium. <laughs> Yeah. We yeah. must be living. We are clearly living in alternate universes because uh -huh. I do not recall the yeah. magnesium craze. Oh, yeah. I was all about it. And then oh, I died down. And now with Dr. Nandy, uh, one of our listeners reached out and said, hey, have you thought of adding magnesium to like your 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 food or to like um your whatever supplements you're going to take in the morning, like whether it's vitamin C or whatever you're going to take or yeah. your emergency, add magnesium. And I was like, oh. Is magnesium back? Magnesium, it's back. And then I read that it's really great for weight loss. I know. So now magnesium, I think, is going to hit the runway again. So magnesium is back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, who knew? I yeah. didn't even know it had arrived before. 
Oh yeah, this is its second okay. coming. This it's is its second enough. coming. I'm glad you're on top of this for our family. Yeah. I really am. So I'm going to be bringing back some magnesium. So don't be surprised. <laughs> bringing back the magnesium. <laughs> She's going to be spiking. If I die of a magnesium overdose, uh -huh, you know was she me. was spiking my stuff. I was. Um, one of the other things, and you touched upon it earlier, is that we all know, and this is like, oh God, don't want to like beat a dead horse. Stress is a factor with regards to weight loss because when you're stressed, you will get comfort food. Everyone knows this. It comforts you. Yeah. It makes you feel better. So I actually pulled some crazy things about stress. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, here are a couple. Who's going to read them? Okay. They're crazy. <laughs> I'm looking at them right now. Yeah, Go they're on. They're crazy, but one of Tell them the I'm actually- Okay. I'm going to do it for the entire family. If you are having a stressful day and you look through a kaleidoscope, it will calm you. I'm getting a kaleidoscope for Parker because she has a extremely high stress. Granny- as What's a kaleidoscope? <laughs> okay. It's this like prism. <laughs> you know what a kaleidoscope is. Stop it. I haven't heard that word in 35 years. <laughs> I'm getting a kaleidoscope. I'm sending it to each of the girls because- Good luck. Parker is- Think about it. If you're in the office and you're working, you have a stressful project, just stop for a minute and look through the kaleidoscope and see if it calms you. What, how else do you calm yourself? What are we pilgrims? Like, what is Let's going on here? How do you how do you reduce your stress? I call inanimate objects <laughs> the most foul things anybody has ever said to another person. Well, it's not a person; it's an inanimate. I object. I know, but imagine, <laughs> oh, okay. imagine the worst thing you could say to somebody, and I will say that to the printer, to a piece of drywall. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try something new. I'm going to get you a kaleidoscope, and when you're feeling like you want to swear. At the couch, you're going to pick up the kaleidoscope and you're going to look through it. I'm willing to try many things. But I think we should try something I want new. you to try the kaleidoscope. I'm going to I'm gonna carry it in my purse. At 8 a.m. in the morning, you try the kaleidoscope. When you are at your supreme historical Nicest. worst. Nicest. I want you to try the kaleidoscope. Well, I'm getting a kaleidoscope like a, for all three I'm going to get you one of those things that the surfers wear on the surfboards <laughs> to keep the board from floating away. Oh, those are a leash. So. Yeah. I'm going to get you a kaleidoscope leash. <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah, a kaleidoscope. <sighs> Another one. To reduce stress. I may actually be more inclined to do the kaleidoscope. Blowing on your thumb. Your thumb <laughs> has its own pulse when you blow... <gasps> You Wait. slow it. <laughs> blowing on your thumb. Okay, hold on. You blow when on your thumb? When you're in the office. Go ahead, show the people how you blow no. on your thumb. When you're in the office, I want you to start blowing on your thumb. Your thumb has its own pulse. So when you blow, you slow down your heart rate, reduce cortisol, and it activates the vagus nerve. What is the vagus nerve? The vagus nerve, also known as the vagal nerves, are the main nerves of your parasympathetic nervous system. This system controls specific body functions such as your digestion, heart rate, and immune system. These functions are involuntary, meaning you can't consciously control them. Let's try it. Let's see you try it. What do you do? I don't know. I think Where it's like the this. Thumb? It's like this. Yeah, I'm blowing on my thumb right now. I'm not stressed though. I'm like really relaxed. So let's do it in a stressful situation. I prefer the kaleidoscope. Interesting. And then you know what everyone says, if you're happy, you're less stressed. And I do believe in that. So like I've heard a lot yeah. about like laughter and um, just, you know, if you're laughing, then your life is good. So you have, you know, you don't have the same stress level. Laughter brings less stress. It's a good thing you have me. It is true. Because I make you laugh so hard. Not really. You don't laugh at any of my jokes in real life. <sighs> I kind of do. I mean, no, if they're don't. funny, if they're funny. Oh, you go in the other room and do it. Well, you think I laugh in secret? Yeah, I do. I think you just can't encourage me. That could be true. It's there can totally be some true. truth to that. There can be some truth to I that. I will have yeah. a whole carload of people howling and you will be straight faced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do do that. Because I don't think it's that funny. Am I wrong and they're all right because they're laughing? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. I don't know. I think you think you're funnier than what you are. That may be true, but it makes me try harder when you don't laugh. Oh, it's like a girl you know who doesn't that, like right? you. Yeah. It's like totally. a girl who doesn't like you, then you really want to go out totally. with her. Totally. Uh -huh. Like I know not all my stuff is gold, but you got to test it, you know? How's it going? 
It's going pretty well. I'm 37 episodes in, so I'm doing all right. And you get a chuckle out of me. <laughs> I, I will admit that you're funny. I think you're funny. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't even trying to be. I know. You are unintentionally okay. funny. Oh, thank you. And then sometimes you're intentionally funny and it really lands oh. and it's good. Sure. Like that one time. Should I take can, it on the road? I can give you, no, that's not, you got you to work the material a lot more like I do. But there was one time, okay, so I'll tell you this story about Denise being funny. Oh, let's hear it. One time we were hanging out and I had, I guess, a crazy eyebrow hair and she yanked it out of my head <laughs> without me even knowing she was about to do it. And like we were 20 somethings at the time. So naturally she just threw it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked over at me. I go, what the hell? And she goes, I'll trip over that later. <laughs> that was a really good joke. I was like, oh, this chick is funny. And you remember that all I these do. years it's later. A great, it was a great <laughs> joke. Anyway, uh, it's okay. I don't I, like, I know, I know I'm funny because people tell me I'm funny. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need, I don't, <laughs> I don't need. <laughs> You don't need me. I, I, you, don't I need don't, my, you don't need I don't my need, affirmation. I don't need. I don't need. They say you. They say you sometimes marry your parents. I definitely marry. Like when it comes to validation, I think sometimes I definitely married my mom <laughs> because my mom never gave me validation, <laughs> and neither does Denise. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, there might be some truth. I do validate you though. Like you I, do. I do. But like this I, is not about my sense of humor though. Yeah. You, no. Uh huh. Anyway. Uh, we are so off topic. Where are we going now? We got to right, talk about being to, fat again. Let's just wrap it up. So we're heading out on the road. Um, if you have any suggestions on places you want us to visit, by all means, send it because we will take you up on the offer to visit your cute little town. And if there's a house there that we love, we may end up putting down roots because, well, we're still looking. If you send us a message on our social media telling us how great your hometown is and we read it on the air, you're going to get a kaleidoscope. <laughs> I'm sending you a kaleidoscope. So, um, yeah, so that's where we are. So we have some tools to uh, to to take with us on our on our journey. And hopefully this helped you and explained a little bit about how we Try to stay as healthy as possible while on the road, minus Texas and Savannah. We can definitely be a better example than we have been a parable to you in the past if uh, we just do what we're supposed to do and get back on track. Were we a parable? We are a parable right now. There's no doubt. Okay. You don't think? I don't know. Okay. I think I have to look it up. It's a big word. Parable means a warning. A warning. Okay. Yeah. Like a lesson. What happens when you eat fried chicken and resort food for four months? Oh, yeah. Then we're a parable. <laughs> okay. So that's a wrap on this episode. Wish us luck in our endeavors. Eating on the road. Take them out. Empty nest. Full tank. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. 